without further ado, please welcome David Diamond and his volunteer players, Jim Forsyth, Ingrid Broussillon, and Tara Moon, building bridges through improvisation. Ah, oh, there you are. So folks, uh, first of all, thank you for the intro. Uh, very nice to see you all here. I'm gonna talk at you for just five minutes and then we're gonna do stuff. Um, so I, I wanna start by asking how many of you know and are concerned about the fact that humanity all over the planet is polarizing right now? <laughs> like I, yeah, many, many of us in this room. The so-called left and right, which I'm not sure I believe in anymore. Us and them, Republican and Democrat, liberal and conservative, the worthy and the unworthy, the wrong color, the wrong gender, all of these things and more, labels that we humans make to separate us from each other, to make the other. Nature doesn't do this. We do. Alongside this polarization, I believe, is uh, something's contributing to the polarization in the collective consciousness. Just in the news this morning, and I need to say I was just waking up at the time, I'm not altogether certain of the number. But the temperatures the planet's currently experiencing are the highest in the last 12 or 20,000 years. Whether it's 12 or 20, frankly, I think is irrelevant. <laughs> We're in an emergency. And the revolution we need on the planet is dissolving walls and at least bridge building, not more polarization. I co-founded a theater company, Headlines Theater, in 1981, became artistic director in 84, and then, having encountered the work of two Brazilians, Paulo Freire, how many of you know of the work of Freire? Just, yeah, and then Augusta Boal, and he is the founder, of course, of the Theater of the Oppressed. Boal and I went on a huge journey from mentor, mentee, to colleagues, to very dear friends. We loved each other, and I miss him. But over the years, that work that I was doing evolved into what I now call theater for living. Not theater for the living, as opposed to theater for the dead. <laughs> I did not see that coming when <laughs> theater for living. And so I get invited into communities all over the planet. It's remarkable. Nobody's more surprised by that than me. To do projects about various forms of violence, getting beyond us and them, humanizing hierarchical environments like faculties at universities, and reconciliation among humans, and also reconciliation with the planet. All of it in the end, building bridges of some sort. But instead of trying to tell you about it, because it's a very difficult thing to explain, I'm going to try, please understand I normally work with groups for at least eight hours, usually eight hours a day for a week, not 81 minutes. Um, so we're just going to do a whiff get a sousson, as they say, just <laughs> dipping our toes in the water here today. Now, these courageous people, would you introduce yourselves, please? Uh, I'm Tara. I'm Jim. Ingrid. We got together uh, today uh, at uh, 1.30, and we worked together for just under two hours to prepare for now. We're going to present you with some images out of their lives. Out of their lives. About something that um, I'm hoping we all share, and that is their struggles somehow inside their relationship with improvisation. Because that's what this conference is about. And it's what you're here to discuss. 
And it's one of the things, in my mind, that makes you a community. And so we're going to look at that. Um, and of course, you know, I work with individuals, of course, in a room. But what I really work with is the consciousness of what I call living communities. So we're going to do it. And we're going to have time for discussion afterwards. Um, oh, yes, of course. What we're going to do here today can't be about those people out there. It can only be about us in here. And I want to acknowledge, because I'm going to be inviting you to come on and off the stage, because it's not a performance. It's an improvisational event. And there are a lot of you in the room, and you're really crammed together. And it's going to be challenging for you to get out of there and up here. It's going to be challenging. But you know, folks, life isn't necessarily easy. So I really want to encourage you to do that because the more you sit and watch people do this, the less is going to happen in this room and the less everybody's going to take away. And the more you actively engage in it, the more is going to happen in this room and the more everybody is going to take away. This truly does depend on you. So, away we go. Can you hear me without this? Yes. yes. Yeah, so, pardon me? It's easier to lose it. Use it or lose it. Okay. Um, so, could we have the first image, please? Here is an image, somehow, of a struggle inside the world of improvisation. What do you see? Just start yelling stuff out. Balance. Pardon me? Balance. Balance. Discuss. 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 Uh, actually, raise a hand because, yeah. <laughs> yes. Mediation. Mediation. Resistance. Resistance. Confusion. Confusion. Disdain in the blue. Conflict. Conflict. Force. Force. Disconnection. Disconnection. I'm sure there's other things. I'm assuming many of you are improvisers. <laughs> if you've been one of these characters, either realistically or symbolically, I'm going to ask you to come onto the stage, stand in the same shape as the character. If you've been one of these characters, realistically or symbolically, all do this at the same time. Uh, just because you're back there, yeah, exactly. Come, please. People in the image, if you want to get sore, shake it out. You don't have to stay frozen all the time. Yes. 
it doesn't have to be her exact story. You understand something about the story. So you place yourself inside it, and you have an internal monologue. Same for all of you. Ready? Into shapes, please. Internal monologue, just for a few moments. Keep talking till I ask you to stop. Ready? And go! <laughs> Latchy bodies, but don't go away. Over here, I'm going to come and touch you on the shoulder. Say a sentence, please. It begins with the words, I want. I want. Speak as a character, please. Decide what it is, commit to it. Don't change it with your other people's. Here we go. I want to go slow. I want nothing to do with you. I want you to be normal. That's what you want somebody to be. What do you want? I want to be normal. <laughs> and if I could be normal, maybe somebody else can be normal. I want to be recognized as a full human. Um, peace. I want to do this right. I want to belong. I may not get to all of you. I want to pursue my dreams. I want them to understand each other. I want to help work out. I want true representation. Relax over here. If you're in this shape, I think some of you are in this shape. Yeah, I made that error. Relax if you're in this shape. In this shape, into your, into your um, shape, please. I want. I want this to stop. I want this person out of my life. That's what you want this person to be or do. What do you want? I want to run away again. I want to get that out of her. I want to know what made you think that was okay. I want to feel connected. I want to leave. I want to feel safe in this space. I want to understand. I want true representation. The shape. I might come back to you. Yeah, no, no, just again, because you're in that shape. Oh, you're in that shape. I want to belong. I want to pursue my dreams. I want them to understand each other. That's what you want them to do. What do you want? I'll come back. Yeah. I want to focus on my North Star. I want to build. I want to bring people together. I want to create safety. I want to help. I want to create safety. I want to do this right. I want to be recognized as a full worthy human. I want to get out of the middle. <laughs>
Who sees other people? Can I see some hands, please? If you see other people, and, and, and just for the interest of time, I'm going to say maybe a dozen of you. Some of you from here and some of you from there. A dozen of you. Come, be those other people. It doesn't have to be an exact dozen. So, <laughs> Could be a baker's I want to feel connected. He said from way over here with his back to everybody. <laughs> I want this to be better. I want to run the scene. I want true representation. I want to be seen. I want to be as accepted as what I am. Is there anybody you can come to? Oh, sorry. I don't know, safety. Mm. You place yourselves, thank you, go back. How many of us recognize how important the representation issue is? Not just in the improv way, but in our arts and culture. How many of you recognize that? And how many of you recognize that for people, not for everybody, but for some people, that's a complicated thing? How many of you understand that? And so most of you who understand it, and I can't be all of you folks, just like maybe four or five of you because of time. How do you understand, if you will, if, if you will, in a sense to not long paragraphs, how do you understand that, anybody? Yeah? Because you want to represent unique, sorry, uh, oh, it's okay, um, you want to represent the things that we recognize, but also all the uniqueness in people, right. which is something Collective, but also something individual. Okay. Anybody else? J just say, and I will repeat. I'll try to repeat. We're all composed of multiple identities, each of which has varying levels of privilege and uh, struggle. Right. Everybody heard that, right? Yeah. 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 yeah go. Ahead. What's the hand? No. no. Yeah. I'm complicit in wanting to retain my power. Uh, that we are complicit in wanting to retain our power. Right. And I want to do more. Go. I don't know how to show myself. 
that sometimes we don't actually know how to show ourselves. Go. And then hear another song. Who wants to be comfortable with my authenticity and vulnerability? The one wants to be comfortable with their own authenticity and vulnerability. Oh. I, I want to be like that everlasting God stopper where there's a hard shell, but invariably like a little bit gets worn out and that's the part you don't want to expose and everybody sees that. One wants to be part of the everlasting God stopper. <laughs> Which he calls the little mushy part inside <laughs> that we don't really want to expose. Very last, go. I see a, a depiction here of the, the three people. Um, what I observe. Yeah, so I'm trying to interrupt you. I'm not asking what you observe. Okay. I'm asking you what you recognize in your own life. What I recognize in my own life is that um, I have awareness that I'm very motivated by fear and vulnerability. Right that many of us are motivated by fear and vulnerability, the fight or flight response. Okay, um, we're gonna move on. Now, just so you know, in my work, I'm not gonna tell you whose well, who's image this was really, and I don't ask imaginators to explain their image. Why? Because I don't wanna work with the consciousness in the room. I am more interested in our perceptions of the image than on the story of the image. I find it's a more inclusive way to work, and in fact, it's safer for the people who make the images. It took me a long time to get there. So, uh, image number two, please.
turn them all on, all of you at the same time. Ready and go. And freeze. Uh, since please, the please of words I want. And then when we finish this part, I'm going to explain why I want is important to you. Oh, be in one of the shapes on the stage. Yeah. I want. I want to be perfect. I want this comedy to leave the world better. That's what you want the comedy to do. What do you want? I want the world better. That's what you want the world to be, and I, I share that want. But what do you want? I want to relax. <laughs> I want to relax, and only the world can be better. I have no chance to relax. I want to make light of your pain so I don't have to feel it. I want to be entertained. I want. I, I, I want it to solve. Not you want it to do, what do you want? I want peace. I want to help, but I'm comfortable. I want to help, but I'm too comfortable. I want to help, but I'm comfortable. I want to understand her. I want to be loved. I want support. I want to believe I'm enough. I want to be seen and heard. I want respect. I want to be accepted. I want to be taken seriously. I want to play. I want my effort to be understood. I want to take that back. I want to belong. I want to book a to make you laugh. That's what you want them to do. What do you want? 
I want him, that's what I want him to do, what he wants. I, I work on violence issues a lot. Do you like me for a second? I've got a, a character on the stage like this. I want her to be afraid, that's what she wants her to do, what he wants. I want her to feel, that's what she wants her to feel, what he wants. Somebody said this up here. I want to feel safe. Oh, and if you beat the crap out of this other person, you, have, you think you're going to feel safe. You're wrong, but I understand. I understand your wants. And for me, this is getting beyond the symptoms of things. Yes, you know there's a lot of violence in the world. I don't need another project to tell me that. What we should be asking ourselves is why, as a culture, we're growing so much violence. Because folks, it's just like there's a spring of bad stuff coming, and we have a bucket, and we're just keep bailing it away because we continue to deal with symptoms. And we don't want to deal with the, the core issues that are the root problems. Why? Because it's really inconvenient. Because we have to take responsibility for stuff. And we want those other people to take responsibility for stuff. So the I want has become really important to me. Um, back to shape. Can one of you come? This isn't a test. 
It's an exercise. You're not going to do the wrong thing. Come and re-sculpt them into, a, into shape that you would see as a possible ideal image. And we're already running out of time, so can somebody come and do that quickly? Thank you. Yeah, you can move them around. But don't explain anything, just put them in new shapes.
because that is what I learned tonight. I guess I must be stupid. <laughs> the things that you learn and you take away and nobody actually ever needs to know. Image number three, please. Inside the world of improvisation, audience, what do you see? Concern. Concern, domination, misunderstanding, the patriarchy, misunderstanding, standing by, power struggle, a power struggle, despair, despair. trauma, trauma. Non what was that? Non no, uh, non-consent. A threat. Wait a minute. Complicity. Frustration. Frustration. Here and then there and then we have to stop. Go. <coughs> Sorry? Indifference. Indifference. Regret. Regret. <laughs> if you've been one of these characters, and we've been here for a while, folks, let's be honest. Because let me ask this. With the best of intentions, and I mean this, how many of us have been this character? Can I see some hands? This doesn't need to have any intent to be in this shit. It have, could have the best of intents. If you've been one of these characters, come stand in the same shape as the character. Watch your on the stage. Depressing. I want to do it my way. Relax your bodies over here. I want. I want to know you. I want my intentions to be understood. I want you to be understood to understand. And if you want someone to do, what do you want? I want to know that you understand. I want everyone to know how virtuous I am. That's you want everybody to know. What do you want? I want to be virtuous. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be heard at least just once. I want to be good. I want my experience to matter. I want to be right. I want to be meaningful. I want to understand how we go in like this. I just want to help you. Relax your minds. Can you replace yourself? Did I, did I come to everybody? No. Thank you, audience, for that. For your show. I 
to a lot of work in family violence issues. And I recognize that this can be interpreted that way. And I know that the story that it comes from actually isn't that. But I know it can be interpreted that way. How many of you understand the complexity of this? Can I see some hands, please? And please, it's not to say family violence, because it exists. I hope you hear what I'm saying. You have an epidemic of family violence. Into the shape, please. I'm going to ask this other thing one more time. Can somebody come and create an ideal image from this? The one that is not magic. Can anybody do that? So I'm assuming that in, in, sorry, what's your name? Steve. Steve, in your ideal, something else has happened before this image, mm -hmm. right? And I'm going to ask you, please, to sculpt it. That there has to be an intervention somehow. Because in order to, to get here, many other things would have to happen. You understand what I'm saying, folks? And I'm asking you to sculpt this image into an ideal from this image. Not that there's been two or three other scenes in between. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't. I don't understand. Well, so I think, am, am I misinterpreting this? No, it's handcuffs. Yeah. And so, somebody had to call the police. The police had to arrive, right? And the thing I'm asking, and I'm not suggesting that's wrong, Sure. In order for it to happen, all kinds of other things would have had to happen first. And we're just in this image. You with me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, an ideal image from this image, please. How many of you understand what I just did? Can I just see some hands? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, here, and here's the thing for me, folks. I'm a big believer in dealing with the world the way it is. It's not the way we wish it was. The way it is. Okay, thank you. Sure. Oh, he's still there. Though. He's still there. <laughs> you moved? I don't understand. You haven't moved me anywhere. Oh, I thought you were over here. Oh, you're back to the original. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to be, you went back to the original. You need to be sculpted. So that all that intervening didn't happen. I misunderstood. Yeah. Stay focused. I'm going to ask you to do 
you something I didn't introduce you to, but you can do this. Your secret thought, the thing you're really thinking as the character right now, but would never say it loud in front of the other people. In this moment, your secret thought, decide what it is, commit to it, do not change it when you hear what other people say. Does he think I'm stupid? So I was wrong. She's not the problem. We have three steps left. So we can 
I think the proof of that is everywhere we look. And so, improvisation is an art form, like every other art form. And doing improvisation as a troupe and doing it with community somehow, regardless of the subject matter. Sometimes the subject matter can be very important. And sometimes it just doesn't matter. The act of doing it is an act of healing. Of a community expressing something together. In these three images, and you don't need to know what, what was at the core of her image, what was at the core of his image, what was at the core of her image. You don't need to know. The things that you interpret are actually quite different. And the things that you interpret are the consciousness of the community. How many of you recognize that? Can I see some hands, please? Because, you know, I used to have this argument with my English teacher in grade 10 all the time. What do you mean the poem means this? <laughs> when I read it, it means this. And I mean this, folks. How dare you tell me I'm wrong? Woo! It's art. <laughs> You're going to fail me because I don't interpret the poem the way you do? It's bullshit. I can say that. <laughs> Don't you understand? So, my hope is, and I'm going to go into discussion. I'm actually right on time. Um, we're going to go into discussion that through this, you start to recognize one way, it's not every way, it's one way, that improvisational work can build bridges of understanding. Because when 20 of you come up and you take on, I don't know, that, this shape, and you all have different perspectives on it, that are all your truth, that we are building bridges of understanding, just by doing that. Folks, could you stand for a second? Thank you very much. Who was 20? 
social in Colombia, for the work that he was doing, he left, and now he's back. Actually, the story I'm going to tell is actually about him, it's about Santos, who was the president of Colombia. Um, I know a guy, Adam Kahane, when, how many of you know Adam, right? Okay. When Santos accepted his Nobel for peace for ending the conflict in Colombia, and let's be honest, the issue, there were many issues that still exist in Colombia, he thanked Adam. Why? Because Adam navigated the workshops that brought the guerrillas, the military, the peasant population, all the different sectors that were in civil war for a very long time together into a space to have dialogue. How did he do that? He went and he talked to them individually. And he discovered that they all, underneath it all, wanted the same thing. Two things. They wanted the violence to stop. And they all had very different ideas on how that could happen. Right? The military thought that the guerrillas should lay down their arms. That's how violence could stop. The guerrillas thought the military should be spent. That's how violence. And neither, and neither of those things were going to happen. And they were concerned for the safety of their children. All of them. And so, once he understood this, he said to all of them, here's what I want you to come together to talk about. The violence ending and the safety of your children. And in dialogue, you leave everything else at the door. All your political agenda, everything. And they had to agree to do that, to come. And they all really wanted these things. And so they came. And huge change happened. I just did, I just finished my 24th annual Theater for Living Dream, like last week. And people came from all over the world. And two of them were from the United States. And they ended up just in a, a group together. And they came back with this beautiful little play. The woman, the, the characters, the characters here, is the head of a communications department at the university. And a very good friend of hers and colleague is in the department, and she's been making jokes publicly about voting for Trump, and he's been the butt of those jokes. And he doesn't like it. And he's come to her office to try to get her to stop. And in the play, she says, look, it's too, I'm just joking with you. And he gets really angry. He says, you know what, it's not fucking funny. And he says, it's not like, she says, it's not like you voted for Trump. And he says, what if I did? And he did. And now, like this, he's gone from being a very good friend of hers to being the enemy. And I think that play needs to tour the United States right now. Because as, as a Canadian, what I'm witnessing is the United States is in a civil war. It's a very different civil war. But it's a civil war. And part of that is that I, I, when I say left and right, I don't believe in left and right anymore. You know why? Because the extreme right and the extreme left have come around full circle and become an absolute mirror of each other. Absolute. They are each other's best allies. I am going to say one more thing. I was in a conference in Rio, and somebody who works with the landless community was asked a question. Would he ever work with the landowners? And the answer is no. If the landowners want to work with us, they can give up their land. And I thought to myself, what do you want? Because they're not going to give up the land. And I think what he wants is to be in the fight he's in, because he's addicted to it. And if he really wants peace, he can start. There are landowners who he can work with. All of them? No. But we seem to be in a moment of time 
where unless we overlap like this, we can't work together. And we don't overlap like this. I don't overlap like this with my best friends. We need to be searching for places where we overlap like this. And those places exist between Democrats and liberals here. Sorry, between uh, conservatives and liberals here. <laughs> between Democrats and Republicans across the board. They exist. And instead of going, I can't talk to you, both sides, and it starts somewhere. I have to start reaching across that divide in real ways. My work is not rocket science. It's about people, I work with people who disagree with each other all the time. And you know what they do? They have an opportunity to look each other in the eye and recognize they both have children who they're worried about. It's not rocket science. And things happen. I hope that answers your question. Well, how can we agree to disagree? And, that's, and, that's and I would say, if we don't start doing what I'm talking about, we are doomed. Yeah. Anybody else? Well, there's one aspect that I thought was somewhat underrepresented, uh, and that is the, the character who uh, is well meaning or well intentioned but feels that they are ineffective or doesn't know what to do. Uh, that came up on, on the occasion, I thought, in people's responses. I wonder uh, how you deal you know, with people like that. So I'm having a hard time hearing you. Where oh. are you? So, so oh, you're there. Yeah. Um, one of the things I thought was not well represented uh, in people's comments was the character who uh, is feels well intentioned or well meaning, but feels that they don't know what to do or is ineffective uh, or. Just doesn't know how to make turn those intentions into accomplishments. Yeah. Uh, and I wonder what you how you deal with that sort of situation. Did you come on stage to represent it? Uh, no, I wasn't. <laughs> That's the way I deal with it. Okay. <laughs> you know, people say, "Well, this didn't come up in the, in the conversation," and I say, "But you could have brought it up. Why didn't you bring it up?" Because what I, what I deal with is what comes onto the stage. Because it's not my job in this work to educate you. I think that's a subversion of this work. That's why I said, you know, I see people come to the front of the stage and go, here are the three things we learned today. <laughs> right? I think that's just another act of oppression. Right? It's not my job to educate the audience. My job is to try to stimulate a dialogue in the audience that comes from the audience. Because community A, and I, this happens with me all the time, I'm with community A this one month, and they travel this enormous, what feels like an enormous distance. And I'm with community B three or four months later, and they travel what feels to me like a very tiny distance. But the tiny distance for community B may very well be a much longer distance for them than community A. If my job is, if I have an, agenda, an educational agenda, then I'm setting an agenda for a community that isn't theirs. You understand what I'm saying, folks? And this is a big deal for me, so I need to explain this one thing. Because there's something going on in the funding world now. How many of you are hearing the words social innovation? Can I see some hands, please? <laughs> social innovation for me is a scourge on the planet. <laughs> it is a corporate version of community development. In community development, a project gets developed, I hope, with the community. And a step is taken. And that step is analyzed. And then based on what just happened, another step is taken based on what happened. Same thing, and then another step is taken. And that means that you might end up in a project in a very different place than you imagined. Social innovation wants predetermined outcomes. 
and with predetermined outcomes, you cannot do real community development work. You are setting an agenda, a corporate agenda, for the community. And I've gotten into huge public fights about this with funders in Vancouver. And that ties in to my answer to this question. There was a hand, sorry, yeah, go. I wanted to ask you a little bit more about those images, like how you chose them or what you were intending with them. Some other information, please. Thank you. I asked these people to make images out of their own lives where they were struggling somehow inside the world of improvisation. That was it. And, and this is what you got. That's always the case. Did you talk about it? Um, not without explaining their images, and I told them you would do that. No, no, no. Did they talk about it internally? Um, yes, they did. Because we're doing this for a conference, and, and I wanted to make sure they weren't the same images. But normally in my work, no. The image maker doesn't explain the image because it's not psychodrama. I think psychodrama is a great thing, don't get me wrong. But I'm not a therapist, I'm a theater director. And I think it's really important that you're clear about what you're doing. My question is kind of different. Because on this, when, when these three people, proceeding for picture one, have they talked about what, what the different three things is, or is it, is it okay, fair because that's a big difference for me. It's not, it's not a, it's not a picture that they have talked about what, what illustrates. It's this person, different person. This person made an image from her life. Oh, I, uh, I didn't realize that. Yeah. Sorry. So no, they didn't make them together. This person used the others to make an image from her life. This person used the others to make an image from his life. She used the others to make an image from her life. And then I made sure that they weren't about the same things. So you could get three different images. Is that clear? Yes, no. Yes. Yeah, and we'll wear it. Um, as we're talking about the situation in the U.S. being pretty violent, I think it is around the world, what I feel in the U.S. is that the media is a terrible scene partner. And it feels like, as a U.S. citizen, that we are sort of against or we're fighting against the media. As a general population, I see people every day loving each other, caring for each other, acts of kindness in every community that I'm part of, whether it's spiritual or entrepreneurship or theater, whatever it is. And every time I look on the news, it is literally with, you know, narratives that are so destructive and divisive. So how do you deal with a bully of a scene partner? How do you deal with something like that without it turning to unrest or up at the people becoming violent, you know, against, like we're taking it out on each other to some degree, but how do you fight uh, or stand up to the media as kind of the bully? As the one that's inside, they seem like it's constantly inciting violence. Yeah. And that's a very powerless place to be, I think, for a lot of people in the US right now. Yeah. I agree with you about the media, but I don't think the only problem is the media. Um, when Trump appeared, I was somebody from this side of the border who was saying to people, pay attention to this guy, he's not a joke. Why? Because he actually understood something very real. And that, in my opinion, was that it didn't, it hasn't mattered who was in power. A very large proportion of the U.S. population has become disenfranchised. And he understood that. What does that mean? Uh, uh, disenfranchised. No, living, no, no, no. living in poverty. Um, uh, feeling abandoned. That sort of thing. Yeah. And, and that isn't just happening in the States. It's happening in various parts of the world. But I think, and please, this is just my opinion, we can disagree. This is a, a result of a particular form of capitalism. 
that has been born in the United States and it's tied to years ago a court case where corporations got the rights of people. And that has affected everybody around the world. Right? And so it's it's actually more, and I understand the problem with the media, but it's not just the media. Um, however, personally, something I do, I get my news from lots of different media. From the left media, from the right media, from Al Jazeera, from all kinds of media. And I know that all of it is propaganda. All of it. You know, I've watched CNN become a mirror of Fox News. Like, I don't trust either of them. And I wish that that was happening in the States. That's the only way I can answer your question. That, yeah? So, here. Oh, well, that's how it's um, so it makes total sense when you're saying that each community is unique and, commu yeah. and community development is not a one size fits all that you work in each community. How do you measure your success? I measure my success by the level of dialogue that happens in the room. That's where I measure my success. There's something tied to this. Let's imagine, because I do a lot of this, I'm working with uh, what's the word? At risk youth. I don't like the word, but you understand what I mean. This is part of the contract that I sign with people. I'm not working with them because they're broken. And somehow doing the theater is going to fix them. I think that's a terrible way to work. I'm working with them because they have expertise that yeah. other people don't have. And together, we can make something that knocks the community off balance. Why? It's the same for any living organism, a single cell of a complex human being. The place that transformation is possible is when the organism gets knocked off balance. And in the attempt to regain equilibrium, one of, basically one of two things happen goes back to the exact same place, or it ends up somewhere new. And so I think the purpose of the work is to knock the community off balance. And then, in the interactive stuff, we go into a, a dialogue of action where the community is trying to regain equilibrium. And I want that dialogue that happens in the room, part of my job is to create a space where it's safe enough for us all to get really uncomfortable. Like I do a lot of work on reconciliation issues, and I say to audiences, folks, if you think real reconciliation is going to happen with us remaining comfortable, you don't believe in yourselves. We have a responsibility to enter a territory of discomfort. Some of that is just about recognizing the truth of Canadian history. And then, if reconciliation is going to be real, there is a return of large tracts of land, for instance. Just for instance. Right? And so, I'm not looking necessarily for uh, X end result other than a real dialogue in the community. Why? Because this community's solution that is real for them might be very different than the next community's solution that is really real for them. And if this guy starts to try to say, well, I know what you should do. I'm just an owner colonizing. So you know what I mean? And so for me, it's about the dialogue. The at-risk youth, just to come back to them, Here's what happens in a, let's say, a six-day process. On day, around day three, they start to realize, I'm not lying. I'm telling the truth. And they're going to get to make plays and all this stuff that is really important to them, not some funder's agenda, not some social service agency's agenda, their agenda. 
So for instance, if you play squeegee, there is no you play with you. If the purpose of the squeegee did this, right? If the purpose of the play is to, to convince them to go home, then they don't have anything to do with it. They left home for real reasons. Oops. Going back home was not a solution for them. However well-meaning people might think they are. They wanted the play to talk about safety in the street for street youth. Do we wish kids weren't in the street? Yes, we do. Are they? Yes, they are. I believe in dealing with the world the way it is, not the way you wish it was. And so we made a play that was, that was very challenging for people. Um, and these youth suddenly got to be leaders in their community. Not problems that we need fixing. Leaders. And that changed their lives. So it wasn't my agenda to change their lives. My agenda was to make the best theater we could together, but not the community off balance. And I've been in more therapy than most people I know. Trust me, I think therapy is a wonderful thing. But actually, I think the agenda of not going, you're broken and I'm going to fix you somehow, but this recognizing our mutual expertise and being able to work together and creating a space where you can take a leadership role changes people's lives in a more authentic way than me trying to fix you. Does this answer your question? Yes. Thank you. Hi. how you've taken Boal's image theater and really, you know, adapted it here for this large group. I guess my question is going back to the process of theater of the oppressed. Original intentions were dictatorship in Brazil and overcoming it and having put power back in the hands of the people, decoding the code of dance, all of that. In terms of how you, like, for, I have seen forum theater, for example, being adjusted where no longer does the person who is the protagonist, necessarily the one who has to solve the problem, because sometimes the foot is too heavy on the protagonist's neck. How are some ways, in terms of where we are now in our culture and all of the things you're talking about, um, how are some ways that you had to adjust Boal's image theater, form theater, rainbow desire, all of the things, to to, to live, live in this moment, to breathe in this moment. I already saw some of the things that you were doing on stage, which I thought were fabulous, but I just wanted to know if there's a particular thing or... Um, I have a book called Theater from the Living. I know, I know. <laughs> but you're also doing image theater. I wanted to know, like, you know, yeah, there's... It's just to take uh, uh, um, Thank you. Yeah, it's interesting. I got an email about two hours before I came here. I'm leaving for Europe. Yeah, on Sunday to do seven projects in four countries in Europe. And I got an email from someone saying, I'm trying to get into your workshops and they're full. Can you help me get into a workshop? Because I think you've solved a problem with the theater of the oppressed that I find is happening all over Europe. It was very nice for me to get that email. Because there are, honestly, folks, for some people in the theater of the oppressed community, I am the devil. Because, and the books and I loved each other. And I'm going to tell you a story. It was him who encouraged me to write a book. And he read the first draft of it. And he, he, he read the first draft of it, and we had a fight. We kissed and made up with But he said to me, David, you're naive. There are just monsters in the world who are not worth our bother. And I said to him, hmm. Like who? And he said, like the Nazi soldiers who put people on trains, knowing what they were doing, they're not with our bother. And I said, okay. And he knows I'm Jewish, so he was trying to push a button there. Okay. So I guess that means that soldiers in all other conflicts who knowingly said, perhaps innocent people to their deaths, because this happens in conflict, folks are also not with our ball. Because we're talking about a, an idea here, Augusto, so not just a specific moment. Yeah. And their families who, 
who knew what they were doing and supported them in these actions are also not prison involved. We're certainly talking about a lot of people who are not prison involved. And we keep saying the work belongs to all of humanity. Or do you just mean that part of humanity with whom we agree? And it goes to a man I loved. Please understand. Did what he did when he didn't like the way the conversation went. He stopped communicating about it. There, do I believe oppression exists in the world? Of course I do. Is that language in my work now? No, it's not. So that's the change. Well, the process. Well, I'm just trying to get back to the process. Yes. I, I understand everything you're saying. Yes. Yeah. I'm making plays where the issue in the play, uh, maladjusted. How are we all being asked to adjust to a maladjusted mental health system? And it doesn't serve anybody, including the mental health professionals. Right? So there aren't evil people in the play. There are people who may be doing terrible, terrible things because they believe it's the right thing to do. And so I'm not putting caricatures on the stage. And then I'm saying to audiences, if you recognize the struggle that the characters engage in, any of the characters, and you have an idea of what I enter the character's struggle, and in my adjusted case, uh, humanize mental health, in after homelessness, <coughs> create housing that's safe and appropriate. Gotcha. That's when people respect actors yes. in the same way. And so the binary system is gone. And it's working off a more systems view of the world. So everybody has a potential. There's not just yes, which is not to say, which is not to say yeah. that the oh, this. The, the person I'm beating up is responsible for being beaten up. People want to yeah, know that's their my own thing. Like if the, sometimes it's the other person has a lift to put off the neck of the person that right. That yes. But my question is, how, how, is this a very happy place to be? How many of us have been, either realistically or symbolically, folks, in this shape? Hands. How many of us? You know, I challenge those of you without your hand up, I challenge you. Because I don't mean just hitting people physically. I mean psychological violence, emotional violence. I challenge anybody in this room to say they have never. And, and so if you understand the struggle the characters engage in, and you know, around time that I have so many stories about this, of people you would never think understood this character's struggle coming on the stage because I don't, I'm making something up now. I don't understand your trauma, but I understand my trauma. And they're different stories. But our trauma makes us in a way that we really can understand each other in some way. And that's building bridges in between communities. Woo! Thank you.
people come to the keynotes and then vanish, I actually really hate it. And I'm doing it. Uh, because uh, like things are crazy at the moment. So I will stick around for a short time. But like I mean it folks, I think these people should stick around for the conference. I really mean that. And I can't. Is there a way to reach you in the, another way? Uh, go to the website, Peter Hello at theaterforliving.com. Spell theater like a Canadian. T H E A T R E. For a very short time. So, on that note, thank you, Jen, Sarah, Ingrid.